The 2019 Aston Martin Vantage came into this world decked out in a fantastic eye-searing highlighter green, looking every bit like the expensive Super Tuna car from the future it should. And only now am I finding out the official name for this color and I don't know exactly what Aston was going for. My two days with the Vantage were marred by some of the worst rains seen in Portugal in months, strong enough to flood roads, instigate rock slides and make the locals shrug apologetically. Not ideal testing conditions for sampling the best that Aston's best has to offer, but still plenty of opportunity to discover what sets this car apart. My brief affair started on the epic circuit at Portimao, a place with enough blind, off-camber corners to induce driver fear on the best of days. In the wet it's a proper handful, and so is the Vantage. With 503 horsepower delivered to the rear wheels through the same 8-speed automatic as in the DB11, the traction control was working hard. If I heard you groan a bit at the mention of an automatic with a torque converter in a car like this, know that I tend toward the same reaction. In this case, though, the smooth shifts of the automatic were actually a help. I was able to grab another gear mid-corner in the wet without fear that a rifle-like upshift might unsettle the car. While a DCT would be quicker, it would be harsher, and this automatic is hardly lethargic. Besides, while Aston representatives fell short of confirming that there will be a Vantage with a proper manual transmission, they wasted no opportunity explaining how the center console would be reconfigured to make room for a shifter when one is added. So, there you have it, if you really hate autos, there's, almost certainly, a manual coming for you. Meanwhile, it's almost impossible to find fault with the motor. Say what you will about a Mercedes-sourced German heart in a British body, the AMG 4.0-liter, twin-turbo V8 is still epic. While it doesn't sing like a V12, neither does it have the same snort here as it does in Mercedes guise, giving its own, distinctive, evocative sound. If you're hard of hearing you can option a louder sport exhaust, but the stock unit is plenty randy. Lag is minimal and torque is sublime, more than enough to overpower the Pirelli P0 tires at the rear. Though I needed to be gentle on the right pedal, the Vantage's brake feel is a huge improvement over the soft, long throw in the initial DB11. The shift paddles, too, feel far more positive than other cars' flappier ones. Out on the narrow and sinuous roads surrounding Portimao, which were even more damp, I was able to get a better feel for the front end of the car, which reacts with more bite and eagerness than the DB11. However, torrential rains and claustrophobic visibility limited the feedback, and my confidence. Wet or dry, the difference in suspension tuning is clear. Even on its most comfortable setting of sport, the Vantage is a bit of a harsh mistress, informing you of every road imperfection. Crank up the suspension to track mode and it's positively unbearable on the street. I don't mind, but where the adaptive suspension on many supercars can swing from properly comfortable to outright racy, the Vantage stops well short of that first benchmark, pushing it yet further from its more touring-friendly sibling, the DB11. And that's a bit of a shame because the interior is a perfectly fine place to cover miles. The seats, though more supportive than those in DB11, are quite comfortable and there's plenty of leg, shoulder and headroom for most, even while wearing with a helmet. There's even a trunk big enough for the standard two bags of clubs, plus a fair few storage cubbies and even cup holders. No glove box, though. When it comes to technology, the Vantage offers the same infotainment system as found in the new DB11. That, like the motor, was borrowed more or less wholesale from Mercedes-Benz, where it's called Command. It's not the latest flavor of that system, nor indeed the most comprehensive on the road with a lack of support for Android Auto, but it's still miles ahead of what was found in the last Vantage iteration. Though I confess I had hopes for some more significant chassis dimension changes between the Vantage and the DB11, Aston's first two new models really do stand further apart than the DB9 did from its various derivatives over the years. The Vantage drives as aggressively as it looks, and while many will see it as a bit too harsh in either of those aspects, that's kind of the idea. And if it's too aggressive for you, Andy Palmer has a DB11 he'd love to get you into.
Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Subscribe to Auto TV.